एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द क्लास ऑफ सिग्नेचर्स एक्सप्रेसिंग द सेल्फ वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग द चैप्टर आई स्टैंड विद यू अगेंस्ट द डिसऑर्डर रिटर्न बाय जेनेट एमस्ट्रॉन्ग आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू आर रेडी विद द फिफ्थ पैराग्राफ इन पेज नंबर थर्टी वन इन योर टेक्स्ट बुक जेनेट एमस्ट्रॉन्ग gives a short biological description of herself she was born at the okanagan a part of british columbia she also shares the details of her family she points out that when she introduces herself to her people in her own language it signifies her goals and objectives and reflects her thoughts she describes the details of what she teaches and what she thinks about what she must do and what she can't do armstrong believes in the ability of the mother tongue to captivate their emotions and feelings as it is she thinks that it is difficult to express themselves in english or any other language like the way they are it is difficult to repeat or replicate the okanagan language in english she writes when we say the okanagan word for ourselves we are actually saying the ones who are dream and land together she points out the identity crisis when one's mother tongue is replaced with a another language she says that the dream is the closest word that approaches the meaning of the word okanagan it actually means the unseen part of our existence as human beings she describes themselves as the spirit or the intellect mind as well as matter dream memory and imagination another part of the word refers to that tied into one or part of everything else she believes that it is the dream part of them and this unity or togetherness forms their community the okanagan tribes have a deep connection with the environment to the earth without it they lose their place and the result will be chaos or confusion when the okanagan speak of themselves as individuals they speak of four main capacities that operate together the physical self the emotional self the thinking intellectual self and the spiritual self the four selves join them to the rest of creation the okanagan teach that the body is earth itself their flesh blood and bones are earth body along with the movements of the earth their body also moves they are everything that surrounds them if they cannot continue as an individual life form they dissipate or disappear back into the larger self for the okanagan the body is sacred it is the core of their being and the great gift of their existence 
their word for body literally means the land dreaming capacity the emotional self is that which connects them to the large self around them they use a word something like the english word heart which is a capacity to bond them together they connect to each other their land and all things by their hearts the thinking intellectual self has another word in okanagan which is difficult to translate into english the word that represents their thinking or logic and storage of information or memory literally means the spark that ignites she adds that the phrase means the other capacities they engage in when the action taken is directed by the spark of memory one city is ignited the emotional self of okanagan helps them to connect everything to their heart as does the word me everything is connected almost as inseparable we can't separate it in addition she talks about how the educational practices in okanagan their education methods are traditional their education system makes them disciplined by collaborating themselves with the other selves they are taught to be disciplined and to work together beyond their capacity they know that unless they always join this thinking capacity to the heart self its power would be a destructive force it will be like a fire without control which will destroy everything they strongly believe that once intellectual self must to be attached to the heart in order to make him human turchiyai oknangande vidyabhyasa nayam ennu parayunnathu oru kootaimayil ninnana avar parasparam bahumanichum sahagarichum orimichu jeevikkugeyum orimichu joligal cheyugeyum cheyunu ബുദ്ധിപരമായി കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുന്നതോടൊപ്പം അവർ തങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിനും മൂല്യം നൽകുന്നു ഒക്കനാഗൻ സാർ ടോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഈച്ച് പേഴ്സൺ ഈസ് ബോൺ ഇൻ ടു എ ഫാമിലി ആൻഡ് ഇൻ എ കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി നോ പേഴ്സൺ ഈസ് ബോൺ ഐസൊലേറ്റഡ് ഓർ സെപ്പറേറ്റഡ് ഫ്രം ദോസ് ടു തിങ്സ് in other words each individual is a part of the community this truth cannot be neglected in any way the action of every individual affects or reflects all the members of the family and community the capacity to bond is critical to individual wellness without this bond the person is said to be crippled or disabled and lifeless the word that refers to the relationship to other means are one skin this would mean that they share a physical tie which binds the present generation with the past and future generations of the okanagans 
they share the flesh of many people who came before and many ahead of them the foremost teaching of okanagans is that the community comes first then family and then only comes individuals because they strongly believe that the existence is meaningless without family and community without community and family they are truly not human okanagans can't think about their life without the community and family i hope all of you have walked with janet armstrong and you have valued the life of the okanagan i wish to share two videos in this class next we are watching the life of okanagan native people it will help you to know more details about them
Let's watch a video of Janet Armstrong. I was in high school when I first started trying to find information about the Okanagan people and my culture, my language, and realized that it just wasn't there. It was absent. Even in the Okanagan curriculum, never found anything about the Okanagan people, let alone the interior Salish people. I knew my history orally from my parents, but I had no way of knowing whether that was written anywhere. But I did know that it was wrong, and I did realize that there wasn't a lot of research. Right out of university, I became very interested in traveling around with the elders, and as an interpreter, I started realizing these guys know more about history than anybody else in this valley. At that point, they identified education as a priority for us as a younger generation at that time to do as much research as we could to be able to provide the substantive information about who we were, how we used our land, and what our rights were in relation to that. It was a wonderful time. School districts were involved in developing that first research phase, and that's how I became involved. The first phase of that research was really related to information that could be turned into curriculum for in-school programs. Once that research was done, we produced a K-12 curriculum. The second phase of the research involved looking at how do we look at our own communities in terms of what they need to recover and how they need to apply their own values, their own systems and organized way of doing things. The third phase of our research really is concentrated around all of the revitalization of language, revitalization of culture, which means how can they be applied in a contemporary sense and maintain the values and the philosophy. Well, one of the values that I've carried with me in the core of what inspires and fuels my inquisitiveness about the seal culture is that I realize that there's some real problems the kind of philosophy and value toward the land and the things that live on it is not the same as the seal people's values around all the living things, which are as valuable as we are, as valuable as the next person. So how we interact with them is incredibly important. And I think that there may be ways in which the seal mind and the seal philosophy can provide a knowledgeable and wise input into that ongoing social dialogue. We've come to that time where we need to include as many pieces of knowledge from as many diverse corners of humanity in order to solve this problem that seems not solvable. Dear children, don't forget to read the chapter I Stand With You Against the Disorder written by Janet Armstrong. You should find out the answers of the questions in your textbook based on this chapter. I'm sure you can easily find out the answers. We will begin the new chapter in our next class. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you.